So we did this thing. So here's the thing. We've been doing this event uh, for two years now, right? Two years. This is our ninth event. <clears throat> ninth event. <clears throat> when we first got started, um, actually, I'll, let, me, let me put this in historical context. So when we first got started, we, we knew KubeCon was going to be a big event. It was be like 1,000 people. Um, and <clears throat> Kubernetes or uh, OpenShift was, you know, kind of gaining traction, and we said, we really, we'd love a forum to talk about OpenShift, because I know we're going to talk a lot about Kubernetes. And Diane had this idea, and she said, uh, I have kind of a crazy idea. I want to rent a room the day before, and I'm going to charge people money, and I'd like them to show up. And we were like, you're crazy, Diane, but that's fine. You have lots of crazy ideas. We'll let you do that. <clears throat> and we, so we charged folks like 100 bucks or 60 bucks, or I don't know what it was, but it was something. And you had to come the day before the event. And we got 100 people to show up, right? So I think the room was not much wider than this thing, and it was real dark, as you can see in the picture. And the focus was really on, there was a little bit of focus on customers, uh, you know, or not so much customers, but like communities of people that were using it that happened to be customers. But then we also had to have a reason to get people to show up, and so we had to bring a bunch of really smart Kubernetes people, right? So <clears throat> in this picture, uh, for those of you that, that don't know all of them, starting from the left, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's Brandon Phillips. He was one of the co-founders and CTOs of CoreOS. We liked his talk so much, we acquired his company. Uh, the gentleman next to him is Brendan Burns. He was one of the sort of three people that's, uh, he works for Microsoft now. At the time he worked for, he just, like literally the day before, had gone from Google to Microsoft, was one of the original like three people that, uh, with Joe Beta and Craig McLucky, that sort of started Kubernetes at Google. Uh, the gentleman next to them, who I'm sure we'll see this week, uh, is Kelsey Hightower. Uh, always gives demos, sort of Kubernetes the hard way. People should know him. And then the guy on the right is Clayton Coleman, and we all know he talks too much. So um, anyways, the reason I highlight this is we did this event, and the focus of that event was we're going to talk about this super hard, complicated technology, and Kubernetes was sort of front and center of that event. Right? And it's pretty interesting that two years in, we get the folks from Ticketmaster and they go, I don't want to care about Kubernetes, right? I don't want that to be the forefront of my, my thought process, uh, which is kind of cool because at the time, we were like, the forefront of your thought process needs to be Kubernetes. Like, that should be what you're thinking. Like, pods are interesting and all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> now, of all the folks that are on there, uh, we talked about Brandon. We acquired his company, uh, Brendan. Um, they run Kubernetes over at, uh, at Microsoft, but they decided that they enjoyed OpenShift so much that they want to do a managed service with us, so lots of closeness with him. Uh, Clayton still works for Red Hat, so that's cool. And we couldn't get, we could never get uh, Kelsey to come work for us. We tried, right? But we got this. This was Kelsey's quote of the day. If you're going to build your own platform, if you're lucky, you'll end up with something like OpenShift probably doesn't love that we keep this quote laying around all the time, but it's kind of a fun quote to have. Because <clears throat> the market sort of proved out that if you want to build this, it may be easier to do with OpenShift. Now, I point all this stuff out because we're back in Seattle, and fundamentally, if you listen to today, today was very little about, open, about Kubernetes, right? We started the day with Clayton and Derek and Mike going, you should care less about Kubernetes. We're going to try and make it so you don't care that much about Kubernetes. And what we want to highlight is all the stuff that comes to the forefront, right? What are customers doing with this? What are the use cases that people have with this? Uh, Mike Barrett, who was up here as well, who's kind of our lead product manager, he has this thing he tells us all the time. He goes, look, folks, I know you're, I know you're talking to companies. I know you're building interesting technology. You made a PowerPoint slide you think it's cool. The people that are putting their trust in OpenShift aren't betting on a technology, they're betting on their company or they're betting their future on this stuff, right? So do a good job, right? Build good code, do a good job helping them listen really well. And I think that's what we tried to make today about. We tried to make it about bringing the stuff that's not Kubernetes forward, right? How do we make it more interesting? Um, you know, I, I use this analogy all the time. I think I, I looked at my Delta thing I did about 110 flights this year, which I'm not proud of, but I did. Uh, the airline I fly on uses OpenShift. The credit card that I use to book all those flights uses OpenShift. The hotel that I use uh, pretty much most of the time uses OpenShift. 
The ride company that I use doesn't use OpenShift, but they contributed back this really interesting technology to the Kubernetes community, which eventually becomes into part of OpenShift. This stuff becomes part of your day-to-day -day life, which is very cool because it means you guys want to come help us with that, we want to help you with that, but more importantly, each one of you are helping each other, right? Like, two years ago, nobody in the customer section said like, hey, let's talk about multi-tenancy. They were just like, hey, we made something work, right? This week, we literally had people go, we're interested in this. If you would like to work with us on that, come find me, right? That wasn't them telling Red Hat that. That was telling you if you're interested in multi-tenancy or security or insurance use cases or whatever, go work together on that stuff. That's how fast this stuff's evolved, which is very cool. Now, I use this, I use this slide a little bit. I, I, I tend to be sort of the storyteller in the group. Um, so I started plotting out, like, where are our customers and what do they do? And, and this is interesting enough, and it's, um, you know, we're lucky enough to have customers all around the world. <clears throat> but more importantly, like Diane said, we've had nine of these events. And as you can see, those, those red uh, OpenShift logos aren't all over the world. So I'll, af I'll offer you this. If you enjoyed the event, I hope you did. I hope you got something out of it. Um, and you'd like one of these somewhere else, please let Diane know. Because these things are becoming more than just us telling you about our roadmap. They're becoming about us getting communities of people together. And in some cases, these are big, broad, horizontal things. In other cases, <clears throat> like in Germany, we have a bunch of the auto manufacturers and their supply chains and so forth who want to do these because they want to go solve automotive specific issues, right? We have these in parts of the world where, uh, you know, it could be in Detroit and automotive, it could be in New York and financial, it could be in uh, Austin and talking about barbecue, it could be about whatever, but we want to do these events more and more. So if you're interested in things like this, where you can talk about communities of interest, you can talk about the technology, let us know, we'd love to have them in other parts of the world. Now, <clears throat> we've been very lucky over the nine things that we've done in that while the Red Hatters talk, we'd really love to get users to come up and talk as well. And I highlight a few of these. These are some of the companies that have spoken just at Open, uh, OpenShift Commons over the last nine sessions. And I'll say this, because we bug every single one of the people that come, every one of our customers that come, because we go, we would love to hear your story. And a lot of the people here would love to hear your story. Now, how many of you heard how everybody's story ended? We're hiring, right? Every story, we're hiring. So I'll leave this with you, with this thing. If you are a company that competes with anybody that's on this list, or anybody who spoke today, and you go, hmm, I'm not sure if our legal department's gonna let us do that. I'll say this, everybody who's up here or that has spoken at Red Hat Summit or whatever, they usually come and talk to us a year into their, their process, a year into their scab knees and things they've learned and done well, or a year and a half, or two years. If you're seeing your competition up here and you're like, well, I don't know if my legal department, they're two years ahead of you in the I'm hiring department, right? They're a year ahead of you in the I'm hiring, and if they're a year ahead of you in the I'm hiring or in the two years ahead of you, they may also be a year to two years ahead of you in the, we have technology that will take your customers. So, I don't say that in any sort of derogative way. This is a great place to come tell your story and get people that may be interested in working for your type of company to come do it. And you'll notice it's in every sort of industry in every part of the world. Okay, real quick. Um, can I have a sip of your thing? Of whatever you have? Or anybody? Uh, yeah, that's fine, fine. Um, this is, my little, this is my little pitch. I think what you're going to see this week is we've been, we've been doing KubeCons now for about three years, three or four years. We've, lucky, we've been very lucky to be involved with Kubernetes since almost the end of 2014, 2015. And I think we're really going, what you're going to see this week and what you're going to see over the next couple of years is really Kubernetes is moving into sort of the third generation of, of, its, of its evolution, right? The first generation was Google said we have some code. We all went well, you're really smart, I'm sure that's cool. Sometimes you guys don't follow through on projects and there's really no governance, but it's cool, let's try and open source this thing. And that was cool, that was fun. Um, we were very lucky to be involved with that. We tried to help bring that to the enterprise, right? The second generation of that was, okay, cool, we did a few hello worlds and we made a few things work, let's try and get more applications on here, right? We made stateful sets and we made 
uh, you know, IoT work, and we're starting to see serverless and other stuff. The third generation of this, which is what was just really beginning, and I think you saw some of this uh, all day today, is really going to be how do we make this so the thing drives itself? How do we make this so that the metric that you measure yourself with is not how good are we at Kubernetes, but the Kubernetes is good enough that it runs itself, you know how to scale it, the applications scale themselves, and you can go to the business and say, how fast do you want that? How quickly do you want to get from sort of idea to iteration, idea to execution? And all that's going to be enabled by it being fully automated, the operator stuff that we talked about, it being able to run wherever you want to, so you can take advantage of a Google ML uh, service that's out there, an, an Azure service that's out there, an AWS service, an Alibaba service, or something you run internally. Um, but all that is really going to be what you'll see the next couple of days, but also the next couple of years as well. Now, the other part of this that I think you'll see and as we've gone through this evolution the last couple of years, there was lots of approaches to get there. Our approach, our belief in the whole kind of OpenShift community's approach is you're going to have a lot of challenges. Your business is going to want to put a lot of different applications on top of this. Building this all on top of Kubernetes as opposed to silo X for this set of applications, silo Y for a different set of applications is really going to be key as well. Right? We've seen the community evolve around Almost every single use case, every single development pattern, every single scaling thing runs well on Kubernetes. And that's what we've ultimately been trying to do, is get multiple challenges, whether it's about enabling developers, it's about you know, modernizing and integrating applications, whether it's about end-to-end -end automation, whether it's about a path from sort of legacy to, to modernization, all that's gonna run on Kubernetes. Everything from bare metal to virtual, multiple clouds, serverless, all those types of things. So, I'm not going to talk to you too much more. I'm, like I said, I'm sort of a road bump. I hope you've been thinking about questions. I'm going to leave you with two slides. All right. The first one is, if you saw any of this stuff and you're sort of new to this, and you want to play around with it, you're, a, you're somebody who likes to get your fingers dirty, you want to go play with this, go out to learn.openshift.com. Right. Go out to try.openshift.com as well to play with the four stuff. But learn.openshift.com, great set of learnings for basically uh, directed guidance training. Right, so you want to get a certification, you want to play with new stuff. Uh, totally free, totally browser-based. You don't have to have any toys to, to, to mess with this. Um, if you enjoy learning through your ears, um, I do a podcast once a week. It's called Pod CTL. Um, it's about, mostly about Kubernetes. We weave in some OpenShift stuff as well. It's kind of what's going on in the community. And the last thing I'll leave you with, and this really depends if you're more of a bird learner or you're more of, I guess, a Game of Thrones kind of learner. But these are all basically free books that you can get. Right. Some of them are developer focused, some of them are operations focused, um, some of them are, are, these are all written either by folks out of our, our, our group or our folks in the field who do this all day long. So if you're a reader kind of learner, um, these are great resources as well. Did I go too fast? We'll make all these slides available as well.